As you know, today is the day of what favor and grace. And it is with my great pleasure that I welcome this man of God, my brother, my colleague, the man of God, Reverend Pastor Bowman, D. Bowman Bugnet, is a man of God. <laughs> That that when I say a well-rounded man of God, a gentle soul, he is the associate pastor evangelical church, which we know as Winning All ECWA of Chicago. He is a graduate of the prestigious Mooney Theological Seminary, and he's also presently a senior chaplain in Chicago. Please, without further ado, our brother also is, it's from the, he's from the North. <laughs> he has traveled well around the world and with massive knowledge that I ask us to prepare the tablet of our heart to receive that which the Lord is doing. Yes. Thank you for clapping. Yes. Someone is already clapping and affirming. We are a well-rounded people. We are one people and we will move as one voice. Without further ado, I want to welcome Pastor Bowman Bullnet. Welcome, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome, welcome to Covenant Lions Fellowship of Kingdom Churches. Welcome. Okay, this is the time we could clap for the men of God. Please let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Thank you. Let's make let's make our brother feel welcome. That's right. Let's welcome him. Everybody should be clapping when someone comes to your house. We welcome them. We welcome them. God gave us two hands. Let's use our hands. Welcome. That's the way God is going to make sure people clap for you. If you don't use your hands, then th that's the same treatment God is going to make sure you get. That's right. Welcome our brother amongst us in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome, Bowman. Amen. In his name. Amen. 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 I, I just want to uh, thank you so much, uh, my colleague, Apostle uh, Boucher and uh, and other leadership, uh, I can see different people are trying to check who is on. And I see a lot of uh, men of God and people of God online. Uh, I just want to appreciate you for coming. I want to thank you for inviting me to uh, speak today. Uh, I just want to, I see this as an opportunity uh, for us to have fellowship together. Uh, because of what God is doing uh, in your life, uh, because of what God is doing in your family, because of what God is doing in the world, uh, nothing can stop God to come to accomplish that. So and today, I'm going to be talking to you about finishing the tasks, uh, finishing the tasks, because each and every one of us has been given a responsibility. Uh, so I want you to know that wherever you are, whoever you are, what location you are, God has given you a responsibility. 
The issue is not whether or not you have a responsibility. The issue here is two things. Two things is uh, uh, in play. One, do you know what God want you to do? Do you know what God want you to do? And the second aspect of uh, this uh, discussion is, if you know what God wanted to do, are you acting on it? Are you working on it? One thing is to identify what God wanted to do. And the second thing is to accomplish it. So, and, and I, I will start with uh, reading the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 20. After the Apostle chapter 20, um, I, I will not read uh, 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 this, uh, this verses uh, from verse 19 to 24. I will uh, just focus on verse 24. Uh, when Paul uh, is, uh, he, he, was, he was going to Jerusalem, but he wants to address elders. He wants to address people that walk alongside him. So Paul comes to this point and he says, but I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. So this is my tradition. As I read, let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you, God, for your love, for your faithfulness, oh God, for your, for your grace, for this opportunity, God, for, for your word to come alive, for your word to speak into, into our innermost heart, for your word to resurrect us, for your word, oh God, to have an impact that will make everlasting change, transformation in us. It's only your word, oh God that will change us. It's only your word, oh God, that will make us the kind of people you want us to be. It's only, oh God, your word, that will give us the kind of direction we need. Today, oh God, as we look into your word, as Jesus says, your word, oh God, is spirit and your word is life. Give us life today. And for everyone, oh God, that is listening, Father, we know, oh God, that we are, we are in a different places, in a distance. But again, if technology will connect us, how much more about you? Therefore, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit, oh God, will steer our heart up and will give us the direction we need, not to survive, but to try in victory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. As you read this, this very text of Paul, I just want to I just want to give an example. I know many of you that uh, uh, you pay attention, maybe you listen to the news and 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 what happened uh, May 2011, uh, probably people know about Osama bin Laden. Uh, so I just want to use him as an example of what I wanted to get today. This is a man that was the searching for many years to find him because of what he have done. But that is not the point of the sermon today. The point of the sermon was People that got him, they had a mission. There was a mission given to them after he was identified. And this mission was uh, commanded by a general. And he gave them the mission, he gave them the instruction. They have all the equipment they need. They have all the information they need, the location and everything concerning this person. And they took months to train. They took months to train, to identify, to make sure that nothing goes wrong. 
in the mission. And in fact, that mission, when they went in, they got him, they identified him, and they sent a mission, they sent a message. Not just to the commander, but also the White House here. Mission accomplished. We got him. That did not define the mission. Those that went in to get him, they do not define the mission. The commander defined their mission. They did not. The commander defined the mission. So today, the first thing I wanted to have in your mind, in your ministry, in your life, you do not define who you are. You do not define your ministry. God defined your ministry. God defined your call. So in a situation where you find yourself struggling, you find yourself moving around, you find yourself confused. First thing you need to do is not just to find a way of figuring out because the mission was not defined by you. Except if your ministry, you jump on it, if God does not lead you into that ministry. But it is this ministry, this is God's ministry. God defined the mission for you. God defined the mission. And sometimes the reason why we are struggling, sometimes the reason why we, we feel like God is not acting, sometimes we step before God. We put ourselves in the place of God. I would think that, oh, because I am a man of God, people are pouring in in me. That is my mission. No. Brethren, that is not your mission. It's God's mission. He defined the mission. As Paul says, but I do not account my life of any value as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course. If only I will finish my course. Why did somebody like Paul, he did not account any value in terms of his life? in comparison to the mission that Christ has given him. This is somebody that is very intelligent, somebody that is advanced in, in Jewish law. It's the lawyer himself. It's the Pharisee himself. But when he encountered God, his life changed. His destiny changed. His circumstances changed. His mission changed. So Paul understand who God is. He understood who Jesus is. He understood what the mission is. And Paul said, because of who God is, because of what God has planned for me, not just here on earth, but in heaven, I do not value my life as precious to myself, but to God. To God. And I want to tell you something. If the value you have in your life is more than the vision you have for God, you lost it. If you value your life so much, so much, you want to protect yourself. You want to keep yourself. Everything is about you. You're on the center of the world. In fact, your ministry is the center of the world. Then you miss it. Paul is saying, if there's anything in my life that is so precious, it's valuable, it's valuable, val valueless to me. Because my intention is to focus on my mission, is to focus on that which God has called me and to finish it. And I want to give you another example. I know uh, Apostle Boucher understand this. In our hospital here, there is what we call healthcare power of attorney. So the power of attorney is the paperwork that 
a patient, would recommend patients to have. In a situation where there's an emergency, a patient cannot speak, let's say there's something happened that you under medication, you cannot sign your paper, you cannot give a consent, then you have the power to, you, you assign somebody, either your family, your friend, to speak on your behalf. So I got a call. I got a call to, 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 to help a patient finish this document. And, and, and I walked into, in, I went in and I, I went into the different patients. I went to the patient's room. But a different patient. The this patient, I went into that patient. That patient won the same type of paper. And I was able to finish the paper. I was so excited. I called, came back to the office. Oh, man, I finished a powerful talking. But guess what? The people that called me, the nurses that called me, they were still waiting for me to come and finish the power of attorney to the patient they called. Even though I was so excited, I did that work, but that was not the call I got. That was not the call I got. The call I got was for patient A, that went to patient B. Even though I I did for patient B, for the doctor, the nurses, that, that was not the call. They called me to come and help the patient in patient A to finish the work. Even though I was so excited, I felt like I did something. Brethren, I want to tell you something. You can be excited about what you're doing today. You can be excited about many things you're doing today. If you do not if you do not step into the task in which God has called you, you can be excited. People can be excited around you. But guess what? You are not doing what God has asked you to do. In fact, you are engaging in delaying, in disobedience, even though what you are doing is good. It's good. People are excited about it. In fact, people, bless you what you're doing. What you are doing is not evil. It's a good thing. But in order for you to accomplish what God asks you to do, first, you need to identify, is this God call? Is this God call? Is this God call? And if you got that right, then the next action is to jump onto it. Is to jump onto it. And as I said, God define your ministry. As Paul, as I was say, as I said early, Paul, when Paul encountered Christ, God defined the mission, his own mission. Paul personalized his ministry. And he said, God has called him for this. His ministry is unique to himself. Your ministry is unique to you. And that is your responsibility to act where God wanted to act. How God wanted to act. So in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, I'm talking about the same Paul. But the Lord said to him, Go, for it is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and king and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. God was talking for specifically about this. But God addressed this to Ananel. He said, this man he used to be a killer. He used to be a killer. And he was going to kill people. But I got him. I got him. I don't know about your past. I don't know about what you used to do in the past. But I want to tell you, as long as you are here, God got you. God got you. And God says, this is my man. I have a mission for him. 
a mission for the Gentiles, not just the Gentiles, a mission for kings and the children of Israel. Brethren, you have a mission. I don't know what your mission is, but I believe the mission that God called you to do is still alive today because you are dealing with a living God. You are dealing with a living God. As Timothy, for, uh, as, uh, Timothy said, sorry, as Paul says to Titus, Titus chapter 1, verse 3, and which, and which now, at his appointed season, he has brought light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of our Savior Jesus Christ. So we are still talking about mission that God have called you. So how are we as human beings going to accomplish this? How are we? Remember, we are human. Remember, we are changed. As the Bible says, when Jesus came into this world, Jesus is 100% human and 100% God. The difference between Jesus and us is, is 100% God. We are not 100% God. But the only thing that you can make yourself to be different from any other thing is a full submission to the Holy Spirit. When you committed yourself and you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit in fullness, that is what makes you a unique believer, a different believer, a different child of God, a different man of God, daughter of God. That is what makes it different. So there's a difference between Somebody said, Holy Spirit, lead me today. And another person will say, Holy Spirit, take control of my life today or have dominion over me. Because when the Holy Spirit is having dominion over you, guess what? You don't struggle in your life the way you do today. In your obedience to God, you don't struggle. In your obedience to understand the direction of God, you don't struggle. In terms of what you want God, what God wanted to do, it's, it's going to be an easy for you because the Holy Spirit is in charge of your life. And one thing with God is God doesn't share. It's a jealous God. Some people want to put their foot in God one side and the other side will be a man. I have to tell you, that is not God's operate. If you want to be for God, just be for God. If you are not, you are not. So are you fully? Are you fully? Yield to the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit will have a total control over your life. If that happens, then you're going to be a successful minister of God, a successful child of God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 9, says, Have this mind among yourself, which is, your, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to grasp, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man, and being found in the human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. So I wanted to look at the, if the last part. Even even death on the cross. 
Jesus is God. He doesn't need to come here. He doesn't need to reduce himself to stop. Why did God, Christ himself, decided to empty himself, as the Bible put it? That is what the Greek word means. Given up to come to dwell in this body. Remember this body transition. Nobody lives here forever. Because of sin, we live and we die. Why would God want to take this body that is already condemned because of sin? But guess what? It's because of you and it's because of me that Jesus came. That he will redeem this body. That he will take over this body. And the Bible says, Jesus himself is God. But he humbled himself. As, as, as verse 6 says, who though even he was, he was in the form of God, he did not have Equally with God, a thing to grab. But he did empty himself by taking a form of a servant. Now, some people will just read it and pass. The human nature, the human nature, I don't know whether you relate with human beings. Of course, I do you. But human beings can be, can be nasty, can be dangerous, can be all the things you can describe in this world. How can God take a human nature? How can God do that? Why should God do that? Why must God do it? And the Bible says, being born in the likeness of man. In the likeness of man. Oh boy. The way I think in my human head, I don't want it to be human. In fact, some of us, when you, right, right now, when God gives us opportunity, you want to oppress, press, press uh, a group called transhumanism. Transhumanism, you know what they do? They want it to live longer than what you live today. They want to expand human capacity beyond what God has. So if human beings are thinking about that, because of the limitation that we live in this body, Jesus decided to come to live in this limitation. In order for you to have what any other person cannot give you. So, you are not just human. You are not just human because the dead die. That is the reason why in the Old Testament, animals, sacrifices, nothing can save you. God has to come himself. So your salvation is not just the blood of Christ is not just an ordinary blood. So if anybody asks you, you are an ordinary person, tell that person, no, I am not ordinary. Because you have been redeemed by God himself. The gate of hell will not prevail. No evil, no power will prevail. That is the reason why your job, your task, it's unique to you. And if you identify that, brethren, don't play around. Because God did not play around when you got that salvation. He went to the cross because of me and because of you. And sometimes when we mention going to the cross, in our culture, going to the cross may be... Uh, Nothing. But in those days, going to the cross is a shameful thing. 
It's a shameful thing. It's uh, somebody that committed evil. An arm robber. Somebody that has been thrown out of the society. That you put that individual on the cross. Because the person is a shame to the society. So when you hear the Bible says, even dead on the cross, even just because of me, I should take it serious. That God Himself that owned this world. He owned this world. The beauty that you see in this world, everything you see in this world, God owned it. But how can God send his only son? To go to the cross that he may save somebody like me and you. Why should God do that? Because God has a task for you. God has a task for you. And that task must be accomplished. That task must be accomplished. The second point I have here. How can you accomplish that? You have to be disciplined. You have to discipline yourself. One, commission to the Holy Spirit. The second, discipline. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 27, the Bible says, when Paul was speaking, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one received the So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self control in all things. They do to receive a perishable wealth. But we are imperishable. The New Living Translation says in verse 26 So I run. Purpose. I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadowing person, but I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself be disqualified. That is what it takes to be disciplined. When I was back home in Nigeria, I was in high school. I was competing. I run 100 meters, two by 200 meters. One thing that we do know, we do not. No matter how fast you can run, you must be on your lane. You must be on your lane. You must follow the instructions, the guidelines. Otherwise, you are going to be disqualified. So you have to run with you have to run with understanding that as a child of God, as a man of God, as people of God, God wants us to be disciplined in our calling, in our resources, in management, in fact, in our leadership. God wants us to be disciplined. Today, the reason why today a lot of men of God are falling apart because they are failing because of lack of discipline, lack of self-control. And I want to tell you, in order for you to finish the task that God has called you to finish, you have, you must be disciplined. Otherwise, you will make it you will accomplish it. You will fulfill it. So that in the last day when Jesus called you and called you and say, hey, apostle, pastor, brother, I tell you to do this. Why can't you finish it? And you say, oh, God, because I was not disciplined. I don't want it to come to that point, brethren. The reason why God wants us to hear this today is because God has an intention for us to follow. 
And I believe that the Holy Spirit will gear us forth to fulfilling God's task in our lives. In conclusion, When Jesus, when Jesus was planning to go to the cross, first and foremost, uh, the uh, Herod sent to him. He sent that Jesus should be brought in. But look at what Jesus says in John chapter chapter nine, nineteen verse thirty. Uh, sorry, first and foremost, John chapter 6, verse 28. Um, let me just jump to that John 6, 28. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Now, in John, they came in and asked, some people want to do, the Bible said disciples, some disciples came. They asked the question, we want to do the work of God. In other words, we want to do the work that only God does. And Jesus said, how can you do the work of God that only God does? You cannot do it. What was the answer that Jesus gave? I told Jesus would go and give them some big theological answer, long answers. No, Jesus said no. Jesus answered them. He said, this is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. It looks simple. They wanted to do the work of God and they came to Jesus. What can we do to do the work of God? What can we do to accomplish what God called us to do. What can we do? To step into what God wants us to step into. To do the work of God. And the Bible says these people were apostles. They, they, they were disciples. They came and asked that question. And Jesus says, we don't have a long theological answer to give. The only thing we need to give you is just believe. Believe in him whom he has sent. Believe in him. In another word of the word believe, if you are confused about that, the word believe is trust in him that God has sent. Depend on him that God has sent. Rely on him that God has sent. Look to him that God has sent. What you need to do. If you are struggling in your ministry, you are thinking, what can I do? God is saying, so this is not your work. This is not work. What can you rely on him? That God has what can you trust him? That God, in fact, if you are getting upset with people around you, oh, what can this work this way? Oh, I need money. I need this. I need that. The Bible is saying. So this what work? Rely that God has that is what you need in order to accomplish that which God called you to do. And lastly, John 19 30, Jesus has finished the He said, It is finished, and He bowed His head and gave up His spirit. It is finished. He wanted a cross. That is the end. That is His mission. His mission. To go to the cross to aim the onslaught power of the enemy. Because the devil has been ravishing people, the devil has been manipulating people, the devil has been dealing with people, controlling people, manipulating people, turning people alongside, putting people into slavery. But Jesus says, the day has come. It is finished. It is finished. This is the reason why I'm here. I'm here to give freedom. Freedom forever. And no one can take it from you. It is finished.
Brethren, each and every one of us has a task. First, identify the task. Step into your task. Remain in the sphere in which God calls you. Depend on him. Focus on him. Rely on him. Stay disciplined. And I want to believe in you. Whatever you desire God to do, God will not stop you from achieving that. Thank you so much for listening to me. God bless you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Master Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bowman of Evangelical Church Winning All for that wonderful, wonderful submission about the mission which the Lord has given unto us to run our own race. Thank you, sir, for that submission. I love the illustration that you gave about some of us are so busy doing things that we feel that that is the mission. That illustration about you going to do that power of attorney and so happy that you have accomplished the mission. Yes, it was a mission, but it wasn't the right mission. I love it because oftentimes that's what we do. We say we are doing the work of God. Yes, you are doing the work of God, but are you doing the work that God assigned specifically for you to do? I remember saying to the Lord when God called me into ministry, I'm doing mission. I'm doing charity. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, I'm fine. This, you know, I I am a Christian. I'm doing all that, you know, this is the mission of the kingdom. And the Lord said, you're doing what you want to do. And until I submit, until I submitted to what God wants me to do, I was running the wrong race. It was a good and righteous race, but it was the wrong race. And how can a person know the mission if you don't go to the source to get that mission? Many of us are running the wrong race. We're not running the race which was assigned by God. So I pray that we key in to go back once again into the altar and ask God, what is this mission that I'm supposed to run in order to align into your plan and your purpose for my life? Because guess what? A lot of us are living by grace, not by the the inheritance that God has in store for us. Because we are not in the right cause. We are living by grace because God is merciful. But we're not partaking in the inheritance. Because God is not going to fund your mission and leave God's mission undone. If we align to God's mission, God is going to fund that mission. So I know I got it. And I pray each and every one of us who are present today also got that message about running the right cause. But how do you run the right cause? The man of God tells us that there is a captain that has the blueprint of the mission. If we follow that captain very closely, which is Christ Jesus, we will not get it wrong. We will not get it wrong. We will run the right mission. And God will provide for that mission for us. Thank you, men of God. Thank you so much for that wonderful word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have received in Jesus' name. I I do want to um, extend and say, if you do not know Jesus Christ, if you do not know Jesus Christ, 
I want to extend this invitation unto you this blessed day, this day of grace and mercy. Please come. Come to Jesus. Come wherever that you are. Come in your heart, come in your soul, and just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died at the cross of Calvary for my sake. Lord Almighty, I invite you to be my Lord and my personal Savior. Sanctify me and make me new again. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have said that, just that short confession of faith, that is all that is required of you. Or first step that is required of you. The next step is go to your pastors and your center leaders, your apostles and your prophets that are in the center. And please ask them that you want to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, um, Pastor Bowman. Got you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. It is well. And just, just ask them that you want to be baptized. Because when you get baptized and get dipped, you are being dipped into the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to become a born-again creature. Then the journey begins. And I say welcome into the family of God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please, as we prepare our communion, as we prepare our communion, I want to um, welcome Apostle Patricia.